to our weekly module disciplinary in the kind of grand um, So we're very glad to have uh, Dr. Zimin Lei uh, talk to us today. He is currently a professor at the University of Louisville in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. He um, did his MD from Fujian Medical College in China. And uh, he was teaching there for a few years before he came here uh, as a postdoc fellow in, uh, in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology in 1987. He obtained his PhD in 1995 from University of Louisville and has been on faculty uh, in the Department of OBGYN since then. He has uh, obviously moved up um, and is now professor with Tenor. Um, he has um, had extensive uh, uh, interactions with our department, especially with the, the Dr. Uh, Winters uh, when he was here and also prior to that. And he um, uh, has been a mentor to about 19 um, doctoral and PhD students. He has uh, mentored 28 clinical and um, and clinical uh, faculty and uh, uh, he's uh, widely published. He has over 150 publications. Uh, he's been funded by the NIH for his uh, research uh, throughout his uh, career. And one of his uh, interests has been in the study of LH uh, and HCG receptors uh, in non-reproductive sites. Um, and today he will be talking to us on the functional implications of adrenocortical pathophysiology. Dr. Lei? Yes, thank you. Thank you for generous, very nice introduction. Okay, so the, uh, the topic I'm going to uh, present is uh, functional implications of the LH HCG receptor in Adrenal cortical pathophysiology. Uh, why did I not move? No move. Let's see. We're going to stop sharing just for a minute. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let's try that now. Okay. Oh, okay. And then I guess. Go okay. Ahead. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. So, uh, I also uh, have a no conflicting of interest to disclose. Uh, this freeze again. Okay. Well, let's go to a different. Um, Screen for as far as let's do this. We'll stop sharing again. All right. How's that work? Let, let me see. Uh, okay. See, okay. 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 Good. Let me uh, move this one. Uh, I need to see this, this one. Now, why is that move it out? Now, move that down. Okay. The the freezing. See, I don't use the up arrows. I okay. use these. Let me see. But that's not going to work. So let's yeah. stop sharing again. Okay. Share screen. Uh, this one. PowerPoint. Oh. Okay. And then just where where do you want to go? Okay. Uh, let me showing show I slide show. You can do it from beginning. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. Uh, Okay. Okay. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, but it's working or not? They, they, they freeze it. It freezes it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they freeze it. It has to be. Oh, sorry, guys. We're having <laughs> technical difficulties. So I just leave that one there. <clears throat> so that, that works. Okay. Okay. It, will it be in your way? Uh, that's okay. Okay, the uh, the hypothalamus pituitary uh, adrenal axis and the the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis is two uh, parallel endocrine 
uh, uh, pathways uh, consisted of the uh, top-down cascades and also the bottom-up of the negative feedback loops. And each of the access they can function individually, but they are also known that the, these two access can interrupt each other. They, perhaps there is more we know about the HPA access can uh, they affect the, uh, the function of the HPG access. For example, <clears throat> the arterial cortical can negatively feedback at the multiple level to regulate the uh, HPG function. Uh, if it is uh, less known about the HPG access affect the HPA access. So today, I'm going to discuss that gladotropin, uh, luteinizing hormone, LH, and a uh, hormonoc, HCG, can directly act on adrenal glands to regulate steroid hormone production, in addition to their classic target tissue, gonads, ovary, and testes. It is very interesting that the adrenal gland and the gonads, they are arise from a same progenitor cells during the embryonic development. About in the first week of gestation, the, some of the epithelial cells from genomic epithelium and the mesenchymal cells from intermediate mesoderm to form a structure they call adrenal gladial primordium. About by five of a fifth week of gestation, the primordial germ cell from midgut they migrate and penetrate into this adrenal gladial primordium to trigger this primordium to separate in two parts. One is called adrenal primordium and now it's gladial primordium. So by eight weeks of the uh, gestation, a uh, rudimentary of the adrenal glands uh, is formed. So the common ontogenic origin of the adrenal gland and the gonads provide a possible explanation that the gladotropin not only can act on the ta classic target gonads, but also can uh, act on the uh, adrenal glands. The fetal adrenal Glands is con the, the cortex is consisted of two zona compartment. So after the uh, 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 post the fetal adrenal cortex is undergoing extensive uh, remodeling after the birth. So to form a three uh, distinct the uh, structure that is uh, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. And these three, these thin structure produce three uh, classes of functional difference, the adrenal steroid hormones, such as the aldosterone in the mineral corticoid pathway is mainly produced by zona glomerulosa, cortisol, a straight hormone, uh, and the corticoid pathway is produced by zona fasciculata. The testosterone, the androgen, is in the androgen pathway, and that's produced by uh, Jonah the Dicularis. The It is known that the gladotropin, the bio, biological effect of the gladotropin is mediated by the receptor. So therefore, our group uh, has systematically to characterize the expression uh, cellular localization and functionality of the, the uh, LH receptor uh, in the uh, normal adults and the fetal adrenal glands. The panel A is uh, a PCR data showing that the normal and the adult adrenal gland as well as the fetal adrenal gland, they all uh, contain the uh, LH HCG receptor in mRNA. The in situ hybridization demonstrate the, uh, in the zona radicularis uh, is the zone that contains the highest level of the uh, LHCG receptor in mind, followed by uh, zona fasciculata. 
They are very low or almost non-detectable or LHCG receptor MIA can be detected on the zona glomerulosa. Uh, the immunocytochemistry also further to confirm the localization of the receptor in the uh, adrenal cortex, showing the highest level of, of the protein level is in the zona reticularis, followed by in the zona fasciculata and almost non-detectable in the zona glomerulosa. And panel B is the uh, 14 week of the uh, fetal adrenal gland, showing that they contain LH receptor on the, the fetal joint, but not in the uh, adrenal, uh, adrenal medulla layers. In fact, in the 1970, Maria Group has been report. They have reported that the SCG can stimulate and DHEA software production from isolated zona uh, fetal zone. So the to further uh, the uh, investigate the the LH SCG receptor expressed in the uh, adrenal cortex. Uh, functional, what we did is, is using uh, the, uh, the human adrenal cortex cell line, H295R, and then the results showing that the LH or HCG, they can stimulate those cells to produce a DHEA software, but TSH or FSS or single unit HCG alpha or beta unit and uh, did not uh, uh, able, uh, did not stimulate DSA EA software production. Furthermore, the LHCG also demonstrated that that can <clears throat> increase the uh, DHEA software transferase gene expression. And this is the uh, this H295 cell treated with the uh, ACG in a different dose and different duration, and the results showing that similar to in the gonad tissue, the ACG uh, induced the second much cycle MP uh, production in the media, and also increased the phosphorylation of the protein kinase A. So together, those results demonstrate that the functional LH ACG receptor expressed in the adrenal cortex. By understanding that LH, HCG can directly act on adrenal glands. So it is not too surprising to learn that the apparent activation of LH, HCG receptor in the adrenal gland are associated with several clinical conditions of the adrenal disorders. So here, the first I'm going to talk about the adrenal androgen overproduction due to LHCG. This uh, slide showing that HCG can stimulate testosterone production in ad adrenal adenoma and adjacent the cortical tissues. Thus, the, the normal adrenal cortex are treated with ACTH. It's not surprising that ACTH are able to induce uh, the <clears throat> cortex to produce uh, cortisol, uh, cortisol strong as well as the androgens. And the normal tissue, as you can see here in HCG treatment, only just really, um, the uh, barely increase a little bit about the cortisol and also the androgen. On the uh, adenoma tissue, on the other hand, ADCH increase the androgen production is similar close to what they are stimulate the androgen production in the normal cortex. HCG on the other hand, as you can see that the HCG is significantly dramatically increase the testosterone production in the adenoma. So in, that's why some of the uh, adeno, uh, adrenal adenoma patients the uh, clinical asymmetry uh, is predominantly uh, showing that uh, hyperandrogenism. This is uh, uh, 
a case of the andro, hyperandrogenic uh, syndrome, uh, it's the manifestation of a very large patient with micronotra atrial hyperplasia. And she was a 59 years old uh, woman and uh, have uh, presented a history of the uh, viralization for almost two years and showing extensive the uh, scalp, scalp hair loss. And those hair we saw in the picture is, is transparent. The, uh, also, they have the perfusion of the uh, terminal hair close on the back. The cast guide showing that the enlargement of the adrenal uh, glands. So the surgery to remove the, the uh, adrenal glands showing that the uh, micromodular hyperplasia, the histopathology showing that the those and uh, hyperplastic the nodule contain the uh, high level of the LH HCG receptor mRNA and LH HCG receptor protein. Before these doing these patients underwent a surgery, the laboratory performed the the uh, HCG stimulation and testing. So the results showing that the the give HCG can induce the uh, serum testosterone level increase even greater. If you give the uh, GNIH, the analog, duprite acid, they surprise the gladotropin, so they can reduce the uh, serum testosterone level to a normal range. So the, these results further suggest that the, the hyperandrogenic and, uh, manifestation of this patient perhaps is uh, due to the, uh, the overproducing the uh, androgen by the uh, adrenal, hyperplastic adrenal uh, adenomas. And it was another real case of uh, virulization of a female infants by a functional maternal ad adrenal cortical tumors. And uh, she was a um, previous health young woman uh, developed uh, the Cushing producing a uh, cortisol producing, and uh, also androgen producing, and uh, adrenal cortical tumor. But those tumors did not interfere with the consumption as, uh, and the progress of the pregnancy. So the, uh, this tumor is not detected until the, these uh, women uh, give uh, a delivery and uh, the uh, genetic female infant, but with ambiguous of the external genita genitalia. As you can see, the, uh, this patient has, uh, they has uh, increased the cortisol. They also increased uh, several of those uh, uh, form of the androgen uh, produced by the uh, adrenal glands. So uh, this is the uh, picture showing that the, uh, the this uh, uh, female infant, the chromosome is 46XX, but the, they're showing the uh, lip is uh, scotal fusion without the vaginal opening. So this is a typical male formation of the uh, exposed, directly exposed uh, the uh, androgen. Then the, after the, uh, the delivery, the, the infant and also and then when the surgery, we get a piece of the uh, adrenal cortical tumor tissues, and then we demonstrate that the, uh, they are overexpressed in IHCG receptor in those tissue. And so it, it's not surprising, and during the pregnancy, the uh, elevated gladotropin HCG can stimulate to produce an, uh, the androgens from those uh, tumor tissues. So the second one I'm going to present and discuss is the HTH independent cushings change of occur in the pregnancy and menopausal women. The cushing syndrome, most of the cushing patients is HTH dependent due to pituitary tumor or some is due to ectopic HTH productions. So only a small portion of the uh, cushings uh, still is HTH independent. So, but here I'm going to show you 
that one of the typical pregnancy induced the HTH independent Cushing syndrome. Uh, she was uh, 20 years old, the uh, first pregnant woman in the 21 week of gestation. And she starts showing that the sign and symptom of the Cushing syndrome, such as hypertension, uh, diabetes, acne, hysterism, edema, uh, purple stress, uh, distension, and also the monk face. So, and uh, <clears throat> the CAT scan also showing bilateral enlargement of arteries. The arterial glands, but not showing any natural appearance. Uh, in the 20 week of gestation, due to the preterm labor, she gave birth a, a male uh, infant. So, just really one week after parturition, the sign and symptom of the Cushing's recede. And, <clears throat> however, in the week of 51, these symptoms come back. So the the lady they found it is this lady is get the ectopic pregnancy. So and then of course ectopic pregnancy is terminated. After terminated ectopic pregnancy, the symptom also disappear. So it's very typical. This Cushing syndrome, those uh, symptoms is associated with the pregnancy. So eventually, the, uh, this uh, patient is underwent uh, an uh, adrenalectomy, and then the everything is normal. And after hormone replacement therapy, she also get pregnant and give birth of health uh, uh, babies. And this slide is showing the uh, CAT scan of this patient during the pregnancy and after pregnancy. So as you can see that the uh, enlargement of the arterial gland during the pregnancy, after parturition, the, uh, they return to normal size. Particularly, you can see that the parliamentary uh, measurement is showing that during the pregnancy, the arterial gland is enlarged. The, after 49 days after the uh, delivery, the, uh, the arterial gland uh, back to a normal size. So this is uh, the uh, laboratory testing showing that the this patient has a very high of the urinary free cut, uh, cortisol during the 20 week of the gestation, and then but HTH level is very low. So and also the uh, this patient is neither respond to CIH challenge nor surprised by the muscle suppression. So those results are showing that this is a, a very typical uh, HTH independent. So as you look at the uh, 49 day after delivery, the everything's back to the normal, uh, back to normal. So, so this case is a very typical of the pregnancy associate uh, induced HTH independent cousins. So to further, um, uh, to investigate whether or not this is due to uh, the LHCG and the uh, signaling uh, and the uh, mediate the uh, overproducing uh, the uh, uh, cortisol. So the, uh, the, the results, this is reported by our laboratory, the results showing that the LHCG receptor mRNA is increased in the least uh, two and a half folds. And those hyperplastic cells also express the uh, LHCG receptor mRNA and the proteins. Then in vitro culture, and showing that the HCG is similar to HTH, are able to stimulate the uh, hyperplastic adrenal tissue to produce uh, cortisol, cortisol and androstin down, and it meet the but do not uh, increase the uh, 11 deoxy uh, cortisol structural. So lo those results are, is further to support that the this uh, patient is uh, the uh, the Cushing's uh, are most likely is due to uh, the uh, the higher elevated gland trapping and act on the uh, the adrenal gland to. Uh, stimulate uh, the uh, uh, of the uh, overproduction of the uh, cortisol. Menopause is another 
elevate the ground topping state, right? Because the uh, during the pre menopause or post menopause, and the due to the lack of the negative feedback regulation, the ground uh, topping LH FSH or uh, elevated chronically. So he, here is a, a case on a 63 years old uh, woman, the presented with 12 months of history of the hypertension, numbness and weakness of the muscles, half flush, a decrease in concentration or memory, and patient also has the central obesity, myofascial plethora, and histidium, and also they have a supracar Vicula for part. Then the urinary cortisol excretion was higher than normal. However, AGTH is low and also they now respond to the dexmethasone suppression. However, they, this patient did respond to GNIH induction. Given GNIH, they can induce uh, LH increase in venous injection of the GNIH also increase the uh, the plasma cortisol concentrations. So the and then this patient um, is uh, underwent of the uh, long term of GNIH analog treatment. They give the uh, intramuscular in uh, injection of the uh, the Dupride uh, estate uh, every four weeks. So they, they can show this patient all those cortisol levels is keep in the normal range. The blood pressure is come to the normal and also the insulin response also come to the normal. This is showing that initially this patient uh, the, is respond to GNIH and HCG challenge to increase the uh, urinary cortisol levels, but no FSH. Then after that, this uh, patient should receive uh, GNIH analog uh, treatment for four months. Then everything comes to normal, uh, they maintain for another 24 months. So suggest that in this kind of situation, GNIH analog could be one of the alternative therapy for uh, those type of patients. So third one, and I'm going to discuss that these adults sterone producing adrenal adenoma respond to LHHCG. As I just mentioned previously, the zona glomulosa contains the uh, very low or almost non-detectable LHHCG receptor in normal adult adrenal glands. However, in some of the uh, some of those uh, adrenal adenoma, they are predominantly overproduced adult testosterone. So the, uh, this study, they are using tDNA to profile uh, 18 cases of adult producing adenoma. So it's the principal component of the analysis show is very interesting. It has two genes. One is LHCG receptor. Another one is CYP11P2. CYP11P2, another name is adult-stestrone synthesis. It's the catalyzed the last step, the uh, formation of the uh, adult-stestrone uh, in the uh, mineral cortical pathway. So the PANOBIAC is uh, PCI is further to demonstrate that in, indeed the uh, LH HCG receptor mRNA and CYP 11 b 2 mRNA is dra dramatically elevated in those uh, tumor tissue as compared to 20 cases of normal adult adrenal glands. According to their report, there's one case of those tumor the LHCG receptor mRNA is elevated as high as 2,404 as compared to normal adrenal gland. So, and then the further study demonstrated that 
the LH are able to activate the promoter activity of SIP uh, 11 b 2 suggests that the overactivate LH signaling in the, uh, those tumor tissue, they might uh, stimulate the uh, adult strong synthesis gene expression and then to stimulate the adult strong to production in those tumor tissues. So the uh, lastly, I'm going to talk about the uh, LH ACG dependent adrenal hyperfunction and tumorigenesis. This slide showing that a majority of human adrenal cortical carcinoma contain LH ACG receptor, although this is a, a small sample size. But regardless, male and female, as you can see, about 80% of those samples, they are detectable of the LHCG receptors. However, the 100% is FSH receptor negative. Okay? Then, this is just uh, the histopathology to show you that those tumor tissue have contained a hyperproductive uh, cell marker, MI67, and they express it. LH receptor, MRNA, LH receptor a protein demonstrated by in situ hybridization and immunocellular chemistry. The FSH receptor is negative. The in vitro study, the explained culture of those tumor tissue, then give a SCG a treatment. As you can see, SCG is similar to ACTH. They can induce the, the three major classes of steel, uh, adrenal steroid uh, production. But the, uh, the, all those uh, three major classes of the steroid hormone uh, can be stimulated by the HCG treatment in those uh, explant culture of the adrenal cortical tumors. So, those observation raise the question whether or not the LIH, H, the pathological LIH HCG signaling it induced a tumorigenesis in the arterial gland. So the evidence from animal model study suggests that the overactivated LIH HCG signaling in arterial gland is crucial. However, just the uh, overactivated LH HCG signaling alone is not sufficient. Uh, some other modifier should might participate in this uh, 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 male malignant transformation process. So these slides show a show a different gonadotropin dependent mouse model and actually. Uh, abnormality contribute to their pathogenesis. The, in the, there's many mouse strands using false study. So, so some of those we familiar just like are uh, most commonly used, such as uh, C57 plus 6 or 129 uh, CFJ or CD1. Those uh, mouse strands, they usually not develop adrenal tumors, okay? Even the, the castration of those uh, animals or remove the, the overlactomite, those animals, they, they are not induced the uh, adrenal tumor to, to, to develop. However, there is a certain strand of the mouse and the service, certain strands of the mouse they, normally not develop arterial gland tumors. However, if those uh, uh, animal and un one the gonadotectomy, they, they develop adrenal tumors. So as you compare this, those uh, susceptible strand versus uh, non-susceptible strand of mice, you might speculate in a susceptible strand of mice may have something, some factor, pre-existing factor, that might 
these those mice are sensitive to uh, gonadotectomy induced hyper uh, gonadotropin. So and then develop uh, adrenal the uh, tumor. This hypothesis is further supported by following two the uh, animal models. One is the uh, inhibiting alpha uh, the driven the uh, SB40 T antigen expression. Uh, another one is inhibiting alpha knockout animal. These two animal model, their genetic background is a C57. So C57 is a non-susceptible strain to begin with. Then artificially introduce a, a transgene, SV40. SV40 is an oncogen. And then all you are on purpose to inactivate in having alpha. In every alpha is known to be a tumor suppression. So, however, with this uh, unsusceptible genetic background, even you introduce a for uh, an oncogen or knockout a tumor suppressor, they normally don't produce the adrenal, not develop adrenal tumors. But if you decladotectomize those animal about four months, three or four months later, they all develop the adrenal tumors. So therefore, those the uh, funding, fundings suggest that the LH HCG receptor signaling is very critical, but is not so by itself is not sufficient. So here I show you that the uh, uh, the uh, SB40 transgenic mice, and then normally even by six months old, they are no adrenal tumor uh, are developed. So if those animals uh, under one of the uh, uh that come in by it, about in a month old, and then wait, waiting for another four months, you can see that the uh, the adrenal uh, glands tumor is uh, closed. And this is a histopathology showing the tumor closed on the cortex of the adrenal in the uh, the mouse. And this is uh, further to demonstrate that, that the, the, those uh, animals, the adrenal uh, cortex uh, express in our HCG receptor, they are bound to 125, uh, all that 125 label HCG just like uh, the, uh, the target, classical target cells, latex cells, that's showing on the uh, panel B. The, here, these results, the one of very interesting results showing here is that <clears throat> normally in the male, regardless of male or female animal, without the uh, glottodectomy, <clears throat> the adrenal glands contain very low level of LHCG receptor. And that's the normal C57 uh, mice. So the transgenic mice also have a higher LHCG receptor as compared to non-transgenic mice. But here we're showing that <clears throat> the transgenic mice under one gonadotectomy, the, the gonadotropin is elevated. The LHCG receptor in the adrenal cortex is also upregulated. You can see traumatic increase in the uh, gonadotropin uh, that optimize the mouse. So here it is showing that the uh, gonadotectomy do uh, cause elevation of gonadotropin. The elevated gonadotropin could amplify this to stimulate the uh, uh, HCG receptor expression in the adrenal gland to amplif further amplify the HCG signaling in those tumor tumors. So this is the historic pathology uh, uh, showing those uh, uh, the uh, tumor from uh, SB40 transgenic mice showing they contain a lot of those uh, 
the uh, sale prerogative market KI67, where the high level of you know, HCG resulted in my MA, and uh, also in you know, HCG uh, resulted protein uh, detected by residual hybridization and you know, cytochemistry. And similar to human carcinoma sample, the FSH receptor are uh, negative. So the uh, further study showing that the uh, treated with the, those uh, 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 adrenal cortex tumor tissue uh, cells in vitro shown SCG can stimulate cell proliferation. It increased the cymidine uh, uh, in cooperations. In addition to SCG, the results are very interestingly. The results also show that testosterone, progesterone, estrogen all can stimulate those uh, cells to, to grow. So this point out a very interesting uh, fact that SCG can act as a growth factor in the cell to stimulate cells growth. Then SCG also can act on the LHC receptor mediated to, in the adrenal gland to stimulate those androgen production, the such the hormone production in, in the adrenal glands. That will be, and then those testosterone, progesterone, or estrogen, in turn, further stimulate cell to growth. So it amplifies further of the gladiotropic signaling in the, uh, in the, uh, the those tumors. So the, is uh, 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 one of very recent studies showing that in the SV40 transgenic animal, you give the uh, GNI, GNI antagonist, citro relax, and the, uh, the IP injection for 23 days, they're showing that the GNI antagonist are significant to reduce yeah, the uh, the uh, glottodactomize the mouse, the LH double in the glottodactomize uh, the mouse, and also reduce the uh, the uh, progesterone. Then, very interesting, also reduce the tumor weight. Then, not only uh, reduce the tumor size, also the showing that they are downregulated the uh, GATA4 transcription activator, uh, downregulated of the HCG receptor, and also the uh, downregulated the cycling A1 gene. That's the reflect the uh, regulated cell for the cycle genes. So take those results, it's very clearly demonstrate that the uh, apparent the activation of LH6 you know, HCG signaling in adrenal gland is play a critical role to propel the tumor to close. However, but it is in the cell alone, may not necessarily enough. So there may some other factors yet to be determined that could be participated in this uh, neoplastic uh, magnetic transformation of the uh, adrenal cortex cortical cells. So the summary, the adrenal cortex express low level of LHCG receptor is a characteristic of gladospic G protein couple receptor. LH receptor level increase in the adrenal uh, cortex after exposed to chronically elevated gladotropin. Adrenal cortical responsiveness to LHCG is amplified in the presence of elevated LHCG levels. The increased gonadotropin action can induce pathologies ranging from HTH independent Cushing syndrome to malignant adrenal tumors. The involvement of adrenal LHCG receptor should be considered in pregnant or menopause patients with HDH independent Cushing syndrome or androgen excess. Suppression of the gladotropin by GNIG agonist or GNIG antagonist could be a potential alternative therapy for those conditions. 
Uh, that's uh, all I think the last slide, I cannot get it. It's uh, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's it. Thank you. So any, any questions? Uh, Hi, this is Dr. Krishna Sami. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is uh, Satya Krishna Sami. Uh -huh. I, uh, that was a very nice talk. Thank you. Um, I'm sitting in the office, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm not there. So my question was, I was interested in the menopausal, um, um, you know, Cushing that you show. Um, so the menopausal. Uh -huh. Uh, did that patient, you said for 12 months they had uh, hypertension and then uh, Luprolin was given and then it continued to dissolve? Uh, me? Yes. Yeah, he's uh, it's, uh, yeah, he's, uh, 63 years old patients. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, really uh -huh. patient with the, they, they have, yeah, 12 months of hypertension. And also uh -huh. they show some of the, hy the hypoandrogenic, uh, such as uh, hypertension and uh, yeah, and also post yeah. mini uh, yeah. symptoms such as so, half so, I, so you said they get, got Luprolin and it uh, resolved. Uh, did they have surgery? I mean, what was done? Oh uh, yeah, this, this, this patient, uh, you know, un, undergoing surgery, they just using a uh, GNI agonist, yeah, Luprolin acetate for a uh, long-term treatment, and then they can keep it the uh, normal range of the uh, cortisol and also normalize the uh, 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 plus. Uh, by the time we report it, it, it says uh, for 24 months, two years. Uh -huh. But after that, we are now follow up. OK, OK, yeah, yeah. that was an interesting case. Thank you. Zen Man, you still there? Hey, Dr. Wonders. Hi from, sunny, hi from sunny Florida. Of course, I'm very interested in all of this. It's fascinating hi. for me. Goes Please. back a long time. These so I can see you on the uh, <laughs> video. Thanks so much. So, it, uh, do, is the expression of the LHCG receptor in normal human adrenals and the cyclic AMP signaling been demonstrated, or only in the cell lines and in the rodents? And uh, actually, they do have some other lab demonstrate that. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 the. Uh, HCG can induce psycho-EMP. In, in normal in, human adrenal cells? Uh, no, I think it's a tumor cells. Yeah, I did, that's what so, I thought. Yeah, yeah, it's a tumor cells, yeah. So that, you know, that sort of, you know, you wonder about the physiological relevance if you can't show it in the normal adrenal, only in the tumors, it may be important in tumors and less so in physiological conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. You with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how about this other gene, the ARMC5? Did you read about that? Yeah, yes, it's ARMC5 is uh, they can uh, together with the uh, GATA4 to form metrodimer to regulate gene expression not related to tumorigenic. Yeah, yeah. We 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 did not uh, go any further to 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 investigate that gene. How this uh, upregulated by uh, HCG signaling and how they affect the tumoral genesis. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, well, thanks. Uh -huh. That's what I thought too, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, then, man. Thank you. Nice to talk to you, Dr. Vendes. You bet. Have a good one. Stay well. Thank you, thank you very much. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Jimin, you're awesome. Bye.